Rumors swirl around cephalopod intelligence and behavior, but what are these mysteriously beautiful creatures really like? Hey everybody, I'm here with senior biologist Rich Ross from the California Academy of Sciences here in San Francisco. And we're gonna finally answer the question, is it octopi or octopuses? Well, technically it's octopuses. Yes. Uh, but it could be octopi, because when you bring a word into English, you can Latinize it. Mm -hmm. But most people don't do that. But if you want to be super correct, you would say octopodes. I don't like that at nobody, all. Nobody likes that. I have bruises <laughs> from when I've said that. I don't so. even know what that, that means. Nobody does, <laughs> except for me and two other people. But octopuses. 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 Yes. How awesome are these things? Can you tell us a bit about their anatomy? So they have three hearts, is one of the most interesting thing about them. One is just a regular kind of heart, okay. and the other two sit kind of on the gills and help pump their blood through the gills because they need a lot of oxygen to live. And the blood is copper-based, not uh, iron-based, oh. so that's weird. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of like weird. Mr. Spock. Yeah, so that's, so that's cool. why their blood is blue instead of red. Right, exactly, I guess. exactly. Right. And uh, they have a ring-shaped brain that their esophagus goes through seems inefficient. It does seem inefficient, but they have a way of uh, making sure the food they eat is small enough that when it goes through the esophagus, it doesn't bump their brain. On the outside, they're also very easy to camouflage, and then they have this defense mechanism of ink as yeah. well. Can you explain how they camouflage? They, they camouflage a couple of different ways. There's skin, most of them. Again, mm -hmm. the generalizations are only... It's a pretty big group. It's a huge group. Most of their skin uh, can change shape, texture, and color. So they have muscles in their skin that will push out these little flaps of skin uh, in, so they can look spiky or like they can look or like, like a rock or like algae. Oh, cool. Or they can be completely smooth like a rock or like algae. Mm -hmm. And then they have different cells in their skin, uh, chromatophores is kind of the main one, that pull open and close to reveal or hide pigment. Okay. And they can do both of those things, the texture and the skin color changes, uh, instantly. Wow. So they don't... There's, there's no thought, and then a minute later it happens. It happens on the fly very quickly. It's not like, Ugh. they're just like, <laughs> boom. Yeah, yeah it's they just boom, did it. it happens. Wow. Are they all good at camouflage? You said some are good, some are not so good? They're almost all really good at camouflage. Things like the Nautilus mm -hmm. that has a shell, not so good at camouflage right. because it's a shell. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, the rest of the, the animals, the cephalopods, they can almost all do color changes and texture changes. And what we're hoping to do is get into the field to study more of the larger Pacific striped octopus. We found so many interesting things that they do in captivity. What kind of interesting things did you spot in captivity? Oh man, they do everything that uh, octopuses aren't supposed to do. The more interesting thing that we want to look at in the wild um, is their behavior. So this octopus looks like it's a social octopus. Mm. Um, so it's not a loner at all. They seem to be in groups of 30 and 40. Sometimes they cohabitate in dens. Male wow. and a female, which is something you really don't see at all. And they mate in a non-conservative way. Okay. They mate kind of uh, beak to beak. Mm -hmm. So if this was your octopus, in the middle there is where their mouth parts are. Right. And most octopuses will mate like this, because okay. there's a uh, fear of being eaten by your mate, oh. um, which is a suboptimal yeah. outcome right. if you're the mate. Right. Are they smart animals? How do yeah. they know how to open a jar? We uh, train them to open a jar. Got so it. it's, it's also similar to things they do in the wild with their own food. So if they get a clam or a scallop, they've got to get what's inside, or even a snail. Mm -hmm. So how do they open that? Right. Uh, so they, they are naturally looking at ways to get inside things, because that's where the yummies are. Sure. They want to eat the yummies. Why is it that the octopus doesn't have a shell and the nautilus does? The octopus actually has an internal shell, oh. or a vestigial remnant of an internal shell. Sure. Uh, so that's why. Evolution yeah. is why. So they, they evolved away from having a shell to maybe be more mobile or be better hunters or for some, some reason. Yeah, and so they're all mollusks, mm -hmm. so they're all related to snails. So they lost their shell because they found that the weight of the shell was probably not enough of a benefit to have it. So you discovered recently a new species of cephalopod. Uh, kind of. Kind of. Kind of. It's a, uh, uh, me and Chrissy Hufford and uh, Roy Caldwell at UC Berkeley um, did work on an animal that's not described yet. Mm. So uh, 30 years ago, a guy named Arcadio Rodnice um, did some work on the larger Pacific striped octopus, but it couldn't get through peer review because it was crazy kind of stuff. Oh. The peer review was rejected and for various reasons and he didn't get back to it. So 30 years later, we lucked into finding some of these animals, which no one ever expected to see, uh, but we knew immediately what they were because there's 
two paragraphs about them in a note, and like if we could only get this animal. Right. So they showed up, and we were able to corroborate all of the things that he said they did, right. and we're able to include him as a co-author, which is super awesome. So it's kind of like a cryptozoology come true, kind of yeah. like a, kind of like if you had Bigfoot in the lab, mm -hmm. and you found out that he did run yeah. across the like that all the time, and ate Slim Jims or whatever Bigfoot's <laughs> supposed to do. So we were able to get them in the lab and yeah, they do, they the, do they all those things. They mate mouth to mouth. They live in groups, they will co-den, they have multiple clutches of eggs. So that's all really weird stuff. Yeah. And then they're just a beautiful animal. They've got stripes on their mantle and they've got spots on their arms. What's your favorite species? I mean, I assume you're partial to the Pacific Striped as of now because of all of this new research. Yeah. Do you have a favorite? The other one would have to be the flamboyant cuttlefish. That's a great name. Because it is a cuttlefish and it is flamboyant. Mm -hmm. It's got all kinds of crazy colors on it and it pulses different colors back and forth all the time. It's a really beautiful animal. Wow. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for talking to us today. My uh, pleasure. Where can people find you if they have questions? Uh, at the Academy. Yeah. They can find me at the Academy. I'm just sitting there every day. <laughs> uh, no, at the Steinhardt Aquarium, we're there. They can reach us through the Academy website, and uh, any questions can get filtered to me or other people who know the answers. Absolutely. Well, thanks for coming in and talking to us. You're Guys, welcome. if you want to check out more stuff about octopuses, make sure that you go and watch this video about how octopuses can see with their skin. In octopuses, these molecules are nerve endings on the cell. These little hair-like extensions detect a light and send a chemical signal to special color-changing cells on their skin called chromatophores. Thanks for watching, and make sure if you have any questions, send them an email. It's pretty awesome. He's a fun guy.